Hey guys, tonight we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, specifically how to recognize the Holy Spirit. So there are a few places where we know the Holy Spirit is present, and that's in our sacraments. So all seven sacraments, the Holy Spirit is never not involved. That is, holy orders, marriage, anointing of the sick, reconciliation, confirmation, the Eucharist, and baptism. And that's where we're going to start, is baptism. So now, not everybody remembers their baptism. Some people do. But there's an important part to remember about this. What would be so important to remember about your baptism? Well, there are a few things. One, baptism is wiping away original sin which gives us a clean slate and we're able to live our lives free of that original sin of Adam and Eve. Two, you're being welcomed into God's family. And three, it's a starting point for our relationship with the Holy Spirit or an introduction, if you like that word better. It is your first invitation for the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Now, connecting baptism and confirmation, what do they have in common? Other than they are both sacraments, because we, I already told you that one. Well, baptism, as we were saying, is your first introduction to the Holy Spirit. Part of confirmation is the renewal of your baptismal promise. Hmm. Now, if they aren't connected, why do you think we would do that? Because confirmation is now your choice to pick God. In baptism, it was your parents' job to make the promise for you. Now that you're old enough and educated enough, To make an informed choice about what you want for your life. This is your opportunity to show the world you choose God. And you choose what believing in God means. Confirmation is you choosing to have a relationship with God and with the Holy Spirit. The other part of accepting the Holy Spirit is sealing the gifts that you were given at your baptism. I bet you're looking at me funny though. So let's dig deeper. The gifts being sealed in you means you are blessed with the gifts God gave you for his mission to get everyone to heaven. Some of these gifts include the gift of wisdom, understanding, Fortitude, counsel, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. What other gifts can you think of? I personally always go to music, no surprise there, or teaching like a priest, or speaking in tongues. All of these are gifts God has given to us because we need them in our daily lives. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit as individuals and as a church. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are to be used in our daily lives. For example, wisdom could be used to help a friend with a tough situation or to navigate right and wrong. Courage is needed when our friends do something wrong and we need to stand up for what is right. When we see something beautiful, instead of passing over it, we can thank God for the beauty of the earth. We can always use some more understanding of our faith. Knowledge is needed for our schoolwork and counsel. Can be helpful when we encounter a friend or a loved one in crisis. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are at work in our lives every single day. 
and they are already there daily through our knowledge of God, the Father, and God the Son. The Holy Spirit helps us have a stronger relationship with God, to love God, and to live in His graces. Now, you guys are smart. Where can we meet with the Holy Spirit to get closer and strengthen our relationship with God? Through praying, reading scripture, or the Bible? Participating in the church and through mass? Through the sacraments? Yes! All of these things are correct. In praying, we can call the Holy Spirit to be present. And that's what the church asks us to do. To call upon the Holy Spirit for strength. Or for helping us to pray more often. Or the knowledge to know what's right and what's wrong. Come, Holy Spirit. The church instructs us to call upon the Holy Spirit before we do anything important. The Holy Spirit acts in all forms of prayer and is the master and source of prayer. If you find yourself feeling frustrated or you do not know where to start in prayer, simply ask the Holy Spirit to be your guide. And that's why we can pray through song. That's why simply just having a conversation is a form of prayer. Through scripture, we meet the Holy Spirit because who wrote the scriptures? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? I mean, sure. But could they write all of it alone? No. The Holy Spirit is clearly involved in the writing of the scriptures. If you find reading scriptures difficult, asking the Holy Spirit to help you find the motivation and willpower to sit, to read, and to learn. That is what the church tells us to do. The closer we get to the Holy Spirit, the more our appreciation and love for God and all the gifts he has given us grows. The Holy Spirit is involved in all aspects of the church, even some things we may not understand or even some things we don't agree with. We're not perfect, and so sometimes it takes time to learn and to listen to the knowledge and wisdom of the church. In the end, We just need to be open to the inspiration the Holy Spirit can give us. The Holy Spirit is alive in the sacraments, specifically in Mass, during which the Holy Spirit brings us into communion with Christ. In reconciliation, after we have been cleansed from sin, the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts and helps us become more like Christ. So now that we've discussed how the Holy Spirit affects our lives and how it's, re- it's a relationship, how do you think you would go about strengthening that relationship? How would you strengthen a relationship with a friend? How are you continuing your relationships while you're not able to see your friends at school? Do you call them? Do you text them? Do you video chat? You communicate. It's exactly the same with the Holy Spirit. If we don't pray and listen, how can that grow? However, it takes more than that. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to move in ourselves. That means we need to be open to his will and participate in all the sacraments. The closer we get to the Holy Spirit, the easier we are able to recognize the work and the movement 
and the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are concrete manifestations of the Holy Spirit that we can see in ourselves and in others. Someone who has great self-control or is very generous is experiencing the working of the Holy Spirit. But we can also see the fruits of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Are you exceedingly gentle? Do you experience peace, even in stressful situations? Is it easy for you to find the joy in difficulty? Praise the Holy Spirit for these fruits. The Holy Spirit is not trying to hide from you. He wants to transform you and renew you, especially as you prepare to receive the sacrament of confirmation. And right now, especially, we have to be open to what God asks us to do. And because we can no longer go to Mass every Sunday and receive the Eucharist the way we should be able to, we have to be a little creative. That receiving the Eucharist is our most consistent form of meeting with the Holy Spirit. However, what other ways are we able to meet the Holy Spirit through prayer? And praying together now is a little bit harder, but not impossible. Even as we're all sitting here watching the video, thinking about all these things, that's a form of prayer involving God in your life every day, appreciating all of the gifts, just saying thank you for the sunshine coming out. And even yesterday when we had that crazy snow, thank you. It's, it's beautiful and it comes from nature, which is a gift. Thank you for Brad for gathering us all together every week, for keeping our lives more consistent during this hard time. And those are all from the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Those are from the connection of the gifts with the Holy Spirit. Even though this year we weren't able to have our Good Friday service the way we usually do, we weren't able to go to Mass on Easter Sunday the way we usually do, we were still able to practice our faith even though we're all far apart. And that's what I'm going to ask you all to do right now. We're going to say a little prayer and thank God for every day, for still making it possible that we can learn from our schools that we are able to see the beauty in life even while we're all struggling. For even though that we are struggling right now, it won't be forever. It's just for a period of time. And help us every day to find a way to make you part of our lives and to be open to you being a part of our lives.